Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Today, we are looking into something that's coming up a lot these days, the skin and hair side effects of GLP-1 receptor agonist medications. Yes, the class of medications many patients are taking for diabetes and weight loss management. If you're on one of these medications or considering it, and you wanna know more about how these medications might impact your skin or hair, this is the video for you. We're gonna be talking about what specifically you should keep your eyes peeled for, why it happens, and what you can do moving forward. Also, I want to draw your attention to the fact that on my channel, I have quite a few videos on GLP-1 receptor agonist medications and how they might be impacting the skin, the hair, and the nails. So you definitely want to check those out as well. I will link some down below in the description box and to a pinned comment. The class of medications known as GLP-1 receptor agonists, they mimic the hormone GLP-1. This slows down the emptying of your stomach, reduces appetite, and can improve glycemic control. And for many people, they facilitate weight loss. Because these drugs are increasingly being used not only for diabetes, but for weight management as well, dermatologists are seeing more and more patients who are presenting with skin and hair concerns related to these medications. It's important to emphasize though that these medications offer some tremendous benefits for many people. But with rapid weight loss and with the medication itself, there can be some dermatologic implications. They might not always be on the top of your mind. So let's start with the skin change because after all, your skin is a window to what is going on internally. One of the more talked about side effects is something called ozembic face. While it's called ozembic face commonly, the term applies to all GLP-1 medications. And for the most part, it's not necessarily specific to the medication itself, but rather a symptom of losing a lot of the weight. The term describes hollowing of the cheeks and temple area, more visible lines and wrinkles, sagging jowls, or just this sort of deflated facial appearance. Why does this happen? Well, for the most part, it seems to be related to extensive and rapid weight loss. And to be honest, this type of facial change can happen when you lose a lot of weight, no matter the means. Whether or not you're on one of these medications or you are doing weight loss surgery, you're doing some sort of diet, rapid weight loss causes loss of subcutaneous fat. For the most part, that is desired, but it also will cause loss of subcutaneous fat in the face. But that fat does provide volume and quite a bit of support to the overlying skin of the face. Aside from the loss of volume due to loss of fat, which again is not necessarily specific to the medications themselves, it's also thought, however, that potentially the medications are also having some specific direct effect on collagen and elastin in the skin, perhaps somehow altering skin's production of collagen and elastin. This might explain why skin can become less springy, if you will. The skin's underlying support structures like the fat pads, connective tissue, and collagen and elastin may be a bit compromised. So in other words, when the fat goes away pretty quickly, there's less support overall for the skin to hang on. This doesn't happen to everyone and there are some factors that likely influence it, such as age, the degree of laxity you have in your skin at baseline, and of course, how fast you're losing the weight. If you're concerned about facial volume loss while on a GLP-1 medication, definitely check out my recent video all about Ozembic and other GLP-1 receptor medications impact on the aging face. I go into to a lot more with regards to the different aesthetic treatment options available and the timing with which those are pursued. Aside from the facial changes, you may also notice loose skin and an overall decline in skin elasticity at other body sites. Thinning of the skin, reduced elasticity and sagging, or just overall loose skin in areas like your arms or your thighs or your abdomen. Now, rapid weight loss, which GLP-1 medications facilitate, is commonly known to leave behind sagging skin, loose skin. Thinner skin with reduced elasticity, like on your arms, your thighs, your abdomen, is especially common when you lose a lot of weight. GLP-1 receptor medication mediated weight loss may facilitate some of these changes, either indirectly through the weight loss or directly through potential impacts on collagen and elastin. Loose skin after weight loss is not something that you can really prevent, and there's no topical cream or medication that you can apply to the skin that will prevent it or get rid of it. There's no firming cream that will eliminate or prevent or lessen loose skin. To treat loose skin is to have it removed surgically. While it's not necessary, some people might develop some complications, some discomfort from having excess loose skin and redundant skin folds, which can trap moisture. There can be a lot of friction between the skin folds, along with the moisture trapping that can erode at the barrier integrity and make those areas more vulnerable to colonization with yeast and recurrent yeast infections. So if the loose skin is causing complications, then that 
might be another reason why you might want to have it addressed surgically, but otherwise, if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't necessarily have to be treated. Shifting gears a little bit, I want to draw your attention to something that I don't think is really talked about enough when we speak about how these medications impact our skin. We're always talking about ozempic phase. We're always talking about, oh, lose skin after weight loss. But some patients have to deal with injection site reactions. These are localized areas of redness, swelling, and tenderness, often accompanied by itch at the site of subcutaneous injection. These are actually relatively common. Aside from that, did you know that many patients on these medications can also develop altered skin sensation? Some patients have reported what is termed dysesthesia or abnormal skin sensations, paresthesias, which is a term for tingling, hyper or hypo sensitive skin. What should you look out for then? If you have a persistent injection site nodule or lump or your skin has remained red, itchy at the site of injection, or you're getting redness that is spreading beyond the site of injection, or broader areas of your skin become very sensitive, you have sensations of numbness, tingling, excessive itch, discomfort. These are signs you should bring to the attention of your healthcare provider and consider seeing a board certified dermatologist. Also want to remind you guys that when we're talking about medications that reduce your appetite and make it so that you don't really feel like eating much and it's difficult to eat much, that's part of how they work, of course, for weight loss. But with that can come the risk for various nutrient deficiencies. So if you are considering going on one of these medications or you're already on the medication, I urge you to check out my video on the skin warning signs of vitamin and nutrient deficiencies common to GLP-1 medication users because I highlight some of the skin findings that will clue you in that something's not quite right. You definitely don't want to miss that video if you're on one of these. Some of these skin changes result from a combination of nutritional issues, volume loss, and decline in structural support. So what's going to put you at greater risk for having skin changes? Rapid weight loss rather than gradual. Older age, if your skin has a lot of laxity at baseline, or if at baseline your body fat is on the lower end, or you don't have a lot of facial volume to begin with. Poor nutritional status certainly does not bode well for any of these possibilities. Inadequate protein intake and poor micronutrient quality in the diet, coupled with loss of muscle mass, sarcopenia, which leads to even less underlying support for the overlying skin, all of those things don't bode well in terms of potential skin changes related to GLP-1 medication use. Then when it comes to the injection site reactions, repeated injection at the same exact site or injecting the medication cold or poor technique. So you really need to take a step back and ask yourself, am I losing weight very quickly on this medication? Maybe you're taking too high of a dose and it needs to be adjusted. Have I noticed more prominent facial hollows or sagging skin? Does my skin feel different? Am I getting little bouts of tingling or altered sensation on the skin? Am I having any issue at the injection site? If you find yourself answering yes to any of these, it's definitely worth discussing with the prescribing provider and or a dermatologist. All right, shifting gears a little bit, I want to talk about the hair side effects as well, because one thing people don't often remember is that dermatologists, we don't just deal with the skin, we also deal with the hair and the nails. What's the deal with these medications and hair loss or hair thinning? Hair shedding and hair thinning has been reported in patients on GLP-1 medications. Most often, it is what's called telogen effluvium. Telogen is the shedding phase of the hair cycle. But when your body is under stress, whether it be from losing a lot of weight or nutritional deficiencies, or possibly related to the medication itself having an impact on the hair cycle, more of the hairs will shift from the growing phase of the hair cycle to the resting phase and then subsequently shed, usually about three months after you have experienced the weight loss or you're coming into maybe deficiencies or you've been on the medication. Then all of a sudden you start noticing that you are getting a lot of hair shedding. There's a ton of hair coming out in your hands when you're shampooing your hair in the shower, when you comb your hair, there just seems to be a ton coming out. Those are telogen shedding hairs. And you might also start to appreciate thinning hair density overall. Like you're noticing that your scalp may be a bit more obvious in certain areas, especially at the top or the crown of your scalp. After the shedding, you may even feel like there's a bit of a delay in regrowth that you don't get back to that baseline density quickly. The hair may change texture as well, become more brittle and coarse. So if you notice any of these changes, it might be related to the weight loss. That can happen with weight loss, but it may also herald an underlying nutritional deficiency, such as iron deficiency. One of the more common deficiencies
deficiencies on these medications and the most common nutritional deficiency worldwide. I've done a full video all about the nitty gritty details of hair loss while on these medications, so don't miss that one either. What can you do to support healthy hair growth while on these medications? You wanna make sure that you are getting in a good protein intake. Ideally, you would be working with a registered dietitian who can counsel you on the right amounts of protein you need to be consuming for your health goals. Hair is a protein rich structure. You need a good amino acid offering for growing hair. Avoid extreme weight loss. A moderate pace is ideal for both your hair and your skin. Assess for and correct underlying micronutrient deficiencies. Aside from iron, you also wanna think about vitamin D and zinc, especially if weight loss is happening fairly quickly. Keep your scalp and hair care routine minimal and gentle. Avoid heat styling and putting a lot of traction on the hair that can contribute to hair fragility and breakage. Your hair may start to become a little bit more brittle due to textural changes. And if you put a lot of traction on it, you're using a lot of harsh styling products that could further compromise hair strand uh, tensile strength and ultimately lead to more breakage. The earlier you can get evaluated for significant hair shedding, the better. When it comes to any type of hair loss issue, that's the name of the game. The sooner you're evaluated, given the proper diagnosis, the sooner you can get back on track with the correct treatment to get it under control and to help save the health of your hair. So let's summarize some practical take home points that you should keep in mind and prioritize if you're considering going on one of these medications or you already are on them. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. Make sure you're getting a good amount of protein as well as micronutrients. Talk to a registered dietitian who can help walk you through what it is you need to be consuming and make sure you're getting what you need. Stay hydrated and remember to drink water. Now, water intake is not the cure for pretty much any skin issue. However, when you're on these medications, it can make it a little bit more challenging for you to remember or to desire for that matter to drink water and you can easily become dehydrated. When you are not drinking enough water or taking in enough fluids, the skin can become tented when you pinch it. And that is an indication that you're getting a little low on the hydration. So drink the fluids and incorporating fruits and vegetables also contributes to your total body water needs. Moisturize your skin as as well to help with changes in loss of elasticity, snap and recoil that may be going on. Resistance and strength training. Preservation of the underlying muscle tissue should be a top priority. Inevitable that with weight loss, you're going to lose a little bit of muscle. But the idea is to preserve, maintain and build what you can. Muscle is a metabolically active tissue that really helps with overall insulin sensitivity as well. And it also helps for your musculoskeletal health to keep your bones strong long term. When it comes to your skin, having that good muscle mass underneath will help scaffold and fill in and add some volume as well. As far as the weight loss pace, slow and steady wins the race. Make sure you are losing weight at a safe rate as advised by your prescribing physician. This will give the skin a little bit more time to adapt, to adjust to the changes in body mass. Then injection technique matters. Make sure you're rotating your injection sites, abdomen, thighs, upper arms. Don't inject the medication cold. Ensure that you're going to the correct depth then at the correct angle. These tips will help reduce the risk of injection site reactions. When it comes to skincare, moisturizers, sun protection, and consider a topical retinoid. Topical retinoids can help with collagen production. Sun protection is key for collagen preservation against UV rays, collagen destroying effects. Moisturizing helps lubricate the skin and reduce certain frictional and shearing forces on the skin, as well as plumps and firms the skin surface and helps reduce dryness and irritation. If you are developing a lot of loose skin to reduce chafing, I suggest um, applying a barrier cream cream in these areas. I'm a big fan actually of the Monistat Chafing Relief Powder Gel. It's perfect in these areas. It's lightweight, breathable, uh, a dimethicone based skin protectant, and it's pretty affordable. So that's a great thing. If you have a lot of loose skin to cut down on the friction and the breakdown of the skin in those areas, which can predispose you, of course, to a variety of skin infections like yeast infections. And if you notice skin or hair changes like hollowing of the temples, the cheeks, you're noticing a lot of hair loss. These are things to bring to the attention of your dermatologist. Don't just decide for yourself, oh, I'm going to try and handle this myself. I'm going to adjust my medication dose, tweak it, skip it. Always go through your healthcare provider when it comes to questions or concerns you have about possible side effects you're developing on a medication. Rather than taking steps to address it yourself at home, consult with them. And for injection site reactions specifically, if you have red pain or swelling,
swelling that persists beyond 48 hours. Or if you have skin warmth, you notice that redness is rapidly spreading outside of the injection site, then these are reasons to consult with your healthcare provider immediately because they are more concerning warning signs of a potential infection. Then last but not least, it's really important to set reasonable expectations, what you might expect as far as outcomes. Some skin and hair changes can be reversible, whereas others may require more supportive care. My goal here is not to discourage the use of GLP-1 receptor medications, but rather to inform you of things that you want to be proactive about moving forward so that you have the best success on these medications with your health goals. If you notice any changes, the earlier you act, the better. GLP-1 receptor medications bring tremendous benefits for diabetes and for weight management. But with the increased usage of these medications, we are seeing more cases of things like ozempic phase, telogen effluvium, injection site reactions, and altered skin sensations, as well as loose skin and complications around loose skin like intertrigo, yeast infections. The key is to take steps to mitigate these risks, good nutrition, hydration, strength training, gentle skin and hair care, proper injection technique and rotation, and early monitoring. All right, guys, I really hope you all found this video helpful. Now on the end slide, I'm going to put my most recent video all about these skin warning signs of nutritional deficiencies that can happen on these medications. So definitely watch that one next if you missed it. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.